Welcome back to Simply Fajika, a place for budding and aspiring entrepreneurs. My name is Fajika, and I serve this community as a business mentor, and ultimately, I help people open their non-medical home care agencies. Listen, I am so thankful to be in front of you. I know I have been away for a moment. I did have to step away, but I am back, and I am happy to present to you new content. So I definitely want you to stick until the end because I have a couple of announcements, a couple of updates for you. But in today's video, I want to talk to you about once you hire your caregiver, what should you expect for them to do? So if that's something that you're interested in, and I hope that you are, then stay tuned. So you all know that a couple of videos ago, it may be the last video that I did, I talked to you about what should you expect from your caregiver. And this one's a little bit different because really this is talking about, because in that video I talked about some expectations you should have. And this is really talking from the vein of you've hired that caregiver and so really what should you expect from them? This video I'm really talking about this person is on the job, you're, you've trained them up, And really, what should you expect from them from day one on the job? And so I've put together a short list. This is just five things on what those expectations are. So let's get started with the first one. The first item that I have from you is from day one, that caregiver should be building a relationship, not only with you, but also with that client. So from day one, you're really starting to build a relationship with that caregiver and it's vice versa. That caregiver is really starting to understand who you are as an employer. They're really starting to understand the nuances of the client. What are their likes? Kind of what are some of those unspoken, you know, wants that that client may have? They're building what will become hopefully a long-term relationship And so they're really kind of building those things. You're starting to understand, you know, what are the needs of that caregiver as a person, as an employee? When do they like to be reached out to? You know, do they like that text in the morning? You know, that type of thing. And so you really, you know, it kind of is that, that it's kind of like that trio effect of, How do we all like building a relationship with each other? And so the more you kind of attempt to communicate, the more you attempt to understand who your employee is, the more quicker you'll build that relationship in terms of what it will eventually grow to be. And so you want to make sure that you ask a lot of questions. And that really starts in the interview, right? You getting to know that person, understanding who they are and what they like really starts from there. And then it carries on once that person becomes an employee. It carries on through the actual relationship now that they're actually an employee with you. So I like that part. I like the freshness of a new employee um, because then you really get to test what you talked about during that interview phase. I also like to remind employers that this is really a time that you kind of get to inspect what you expect. You know, don't take too long to check in with that client, you know, because you're already checking in with your employee. You're checking in with them to see how they're doing. Don't forget to do that with your client as well. Hey, how is Fajika doing? How has she been servicing you? Is there anything that we can do better? Give me a couple of things that you really enjoy. You're going to take that feedback and give it back to that employee. Because remember, we don't always want to give critiques. We don't always want to give negative feedback. Um, Feedback can also be positive. And remember, you're building that relationship. So you don't always want to come at that person with something negative. You also want to have some positive attributes that you want to praise as well. So this is where that positivity is coming from. Hey, Fajik, I want to let you know that I did check in with the client and the client's really praising your bedside mannerisms. They're really loving the meals that you're preparing for them in the morning, you know, that type of thing. So I really encourage you to check in with that client as well, or in addition to checking in and building that relationship with your caregiver. The second item that you should be expecting your caregiver to do is adhering to that care plan. Guys, this is really important because you don't want that caregiver going rogue. 
In this particular video, we're talking about non-medical care. So you wanna make sure that they are adhering to that care plan. A great example of this is administering medication. As non-medical home care agencies, we should not be administering medications. And remember, some of our caregivers are going to get very close to their clients. So that client may say, hey, you know, Fajika, can you pass me this medication? No, they shouldn't be doing that. And so again, the reminders can be present. They should not be administering medication. So again, they want to only stick to whatever's in that care plan. And so I always say, set your caregiver up for success. Make sure that you have gone through, and if you want part of the orientation can be making sure that you go through with that caregiver line by line what that care plan is. You may wanna do that in the presence of the client so that if there are any questions, either that caregiver or the client can ask in the presence of everybody um, all parties involved to make sure that if there are any questions, they could be asked at that time. Um, and so to make sure that there, you know, there is no wiggle room, you can make your expectations as employer known at that time as well. Uh, but this is a, this is a perfect way for you to set your caregiver up for success to ensure that they know that they should not be doing anything outside of what that care plan stipulates. The third item that I have on here is they should be providing that white glove service. And quite shortly, white glove service is providing and anticipating and exceeding the customer's needs, that client's needs. Um, I love to share the story of um, Hawa. You guys have seen me interview her here on this channel. When I think of white glove service, I think of her. I think of her coming in the morning, you know, saying good morning to us, starting that coffee for my mother-in-law, coming in. Um, they may have that small exchange. My mother-in-law may be waking up in the morning, but then her instantly starting to rub my mother-in-law's feet. You know, they just had that morning routine. Um, again, without being asked anything, you know. Now, of course, they grew to that relationship, but again, that's not something that's on a care plan, right? That's not breaking any practices, right? That's still within the confines of non-medical, but that's not something you're gonna find in a care plan. That's something that she and my mother-in-law built together um, that exceeds that care plan. So again, that's gonna come over time. That's what comes within building a relationship, but it's just something that my mother-in-law, if she were to ever have to go outside of Hawa, it would be really hard for her to, to, to replace because it is so hard to replace relationship. That's something that is a gem. You know, that's, it's hard, you know, money can't buy that. And so I always like to tell people it's really hard for clients to, you know, replace the relationship. They really want to keep a person that they can trust, you know, that they've built a relationship with over time. And that's what white glove service is. It's really making sure that in the morning that person is looking forward to their caregiver coming. They're looking forward for that doorbell to ring. You know what I mean? So this is what's going to set your agency apart from others in the field. Number four, your caregivers should serve as a liaison between the office and the client. So I will tell you, as that client is starting to build that relationship with that caregiver, there's going to be that organic shift where that client is going to feel more comfortable talking to that caregiver versus you. And so you want to make sure that now that caregiver feels equally um, trusting in reaching out to you to express what that client would normally express to you. You always want to make sure that your employees feel comfortable speaking to you because you don't want to cut off that line of communication. There's so many important things that your employees have to say to you. And when you cut off that line of communication, that cuts off those things, those important things that you need as a business owner, you need to hear. 
So you want to make sure that you open the channels of communication by having open door policies. Um, even if sometimes people don't feel comfortable having those face-to-face -face conversations, you can then be creative with ways that people can speak to you. I think I've shared in other videos before working for a company where um, they had, um, they created, you know, different ways of sharing and inviting communications. Um, you know, maybe having a um, suggestion box in the office, um, you know, that way people can share things anonymously. Um, you know, you can always encourage um, different suggestions. And if you pick their suggestion, maybe someone wins a gift card or a movie ticket or a gift of their choice, you know, just be innovative in ways that you can capture feedback because truly that feedback can be a gift to you and your agency. It can save money for your agency. You can retain clients. You can retain your, your caregivers this way. Either way, you really want to position yourself in a way to hear from your clients and your caregivers. You definitely don't ever want to make sure you're positioning yourself in a posture that is closing off communication. You absolutely don't ever want to do that. The fifth and final tip that I have for you is you want to make sure that your caregivers have some type of way of documenting. So whatever services that they're doing, even if they're just reinforcing that initial care plan that was put together, you want to make sure that there's a way that they can document that that is what they did for that client for the day. So you definitely want to make sure that... Um, you know, whether it's by paper that they can do that, whether you have some type of care system, some type of CRM system, that you have some way that they can document whatever that whatever they did for that client that day, that it is documented. You never know when someone, meaning a family member, um, is going to ask for what was done for that day. And you got to know in this business, especially if it's not documented, that means it didn't happen. So you want to make sure that you can show or prove that a certain amount of care was delivered. And the only way that you can show that is through documentation. So just a couple of announcements before I wrap up the video. So after so much thought and consideration, I am going to have to reschedule the academy I am going to have to do that for a couple of reasons. I would have to say the most pressing is because um, I didn't really think out the time of the year in which I was doing the academy. And unfortunately, it does bump into the most, the busiest time of the year for my primary um, business. And so I am going to reschedule that. We are thinking of rescheduling it for the July time frame. Um, around the summertime. Once I do have that time frame figured out, I will let you all know. I have already contacted the people that have paid um, for the tickets, and so they I've already reached out to them. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that for those of you, because I know some people were still thinking about it, so I wanted to put that out there. And so we will get that rescheduled, and I will let everyone know once that date has been thought of. For those of you who have been thinking about it and really wanted to get your license before the end of the year, um, you still have the option of doing the self-study, which um, I will go ahead and have a link in the um, bottom of the video if you would like to get enrolled for that. I am only taking enrollments to the end of this month. And then after that, um, I will be pausing enrollment for that until... The beginning of the year. So I did want to go ahead and make that clear. I am still doing my staffing webinar, so I'm so excited about that. That is still happening on September 30th. That is the last Saturday of the month. The link for that is in the bottom of the description. I'm so thankful to be having that. That is going to be your one-stop shop for those of you who are looking to um, staff your non-medical home care agency. So I'm very excited to be hosting that on the last Saturday month. The last announcement that I have is if you are looking for a new payroll vendor, I do have someone that I'm, I am collaborating with ADP at this very moment. So please reach out to me at simplyfajika at yahoo.com and I can get you hooked up with ADP. Um, right now they are offering a 10% discount on your payroll services. And for those of you who know, um, who have processed payroll before, I'm actually going to do a video um, this upcoming 
pretty soon quickly here on payroll because that's something, as you know, that can get pretty costly pretty quickly. So I will be doing a video on that. But if you are looking for someone now, make sure you reach out to me behind the scenes at simplyfajika at yahoo.com and I can get you set up with that. Guys, we are still on our road to 10,000 subscribers. So make sure you, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button if you've enjoyed today's content hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you're notified whenever I release new content. Guys, that's all I have for you today. Stay blessed.